All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. But after you start the recording. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Folding is Magic panel. Uh, I am uh, David Jamforte. I am Kevin Shevchuk. All right, awesome. So. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out. This, uh, apparently, people thought this might be an origami panel, and that is uh, not the case. <laughs> I'm sorry if you were confused. Uh, <laughs> anyway, due to the size of this panel, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to raise your hand, and we'll try to address that. Although we will have uh, time at the end for general questions. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to start off with a little bit of explanation on what distributed computing actually is. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to use a little example here. Uh, imagine r rendering a Pixar film. They generate the 3D models, the lighting, et cetera, and then they have to render it out to uh, frames. And Pixar films are so complicated that a single frame can take six hours to render on a single computer. Uh, if you do a little math, 24 frames per second, 60 seconds in a minute, it would take 100 years to render a Pixar film on a single computer. Uh, and as we all know, Finding Nemo came out in 2003, not 2103, so clearly they have some tricks up their sleeves. And what they use is basically distributed computing where they send a single frame rendering job to a, to a whole bunch of separate computers and render them simultaneously and then combine them all later onto a single computer and have the final film. So that's basically what distributed computing is, taking uh, any job in general, any computing task that needs to happen, dividing it up into many small tasks, and then sending it out uh, across a whole, a whole number of computers uh, to, to get the job done. Um, all right, so there are so Pixar is a for-profit company that uh, pays for their own computers to do this, uh, and there's a number of other companies that, that do that as well. Uh, supercomputers are basically distributed computers, except all the computers are in the same room working together. But it's possible to use personal computers, such as uh, you know a laptop, any desktop computer that people own, even a, a smartphone perhaps, to distribute computing jobs out to people's personal computers. So this is a, a very popular uh, way for nonprofits or scientific research uh, endeavors to be able to get a massive amount of computing power available to them without spending a whole lot of money by using volunteers, people's own computers, to, uh, to run whatever computing tasks they need to do. Uh, there's a large number of tasks, and we'll, we'll get into more detail on these later. Uh, later. Um, uh, protein folding, which is a type of medical research, we'll talk about that later, uh, is very a fairly common project. There's a number of astronomy, physics, uh, uh, mathematical projects are very easy to distribute because of how, how they're set up. Um, and like I said, many research universities uh, use distributed computing to generate their scientific results, and then they publish papers on the results, and they also generally release the results uh, to the public for free so that any other research university or any company can, can pick up the results of this computing power and use it uh, for their own purposes. So it's, it generates public information. All right, so ponies. How does this tie into ponies? Uh, the, we are part of the Brony at Home distributed computing team, and we uh, run a number of distributed computing projects um, uh, as part of our team. Uh, this group was founded in 2011, uh, mainly focusing on the Folding at Home team, although since then we've expanded to uh, pretty much every, almost every distributed computing project that is out there. Uh, we have, we've grown a lot. We continue to have about two contests every year that bring in a lot of members and 
contribute a lot of computing power towards science. Um, we've, we're in the top 50 out of thousands of teams around the world, uh, which is pretty amazing. And we also have over 1,000 members on this Brony at Home team uh, running the distributed computing software to run these uh, nonprofit uh, computing tasks. So now we're going to look at some of the specific projects that we run as part of our team and talk about what they do. All right, so uh, one of our first uh, projects we're going to talk about is the uh, World Community Grid, which is essentially a platform for all sorts of different projects. Um, they did a lot of things like um, uh, cancer research where they uh, analyze uh, lots of, well, you can gather lots of tissue samples of cancerous and non-cancerous uh, cells, and, but how do you analyze the data you get from it? And so they've clumped all these data sets up into packets and they send them off and basically we're looking for uh, what are the markers that say you have this kind of cancer or you don't. And so they're using all of that data um, so that they can get uh, better methods of determining what kind of, uh, basically better diagnoses for cancer. Um, some of the other more material science projects that are part of this was um, working on uh, predicting optical and transport properties of materials for solar panels in the future. So we can get uh, increased efficiency or reduced cost for uh, improving solar power. Uh, and one of their other projects uh, was, I believe it's still ongoing, since there's a whole bunch of sub-projects in this one that get kind of phased in and out as it goes on. One of them was Fight AIDS at Home, which is, uh, was testing drug interactions with um, HIV protease, which is the trigger for HIV. So they, they basically simulated a whole bunch of these drug compounds interacting with these and basically will say, yeah, this is going to work or this is, is not going to work. And uh, it's one of the things that kind of came out of this project was they discovered two compounds using fight aids at home uh, that hadn't been previously discovered that had a very positive interaction with HIV protease. And uh, this information has gone out to some of the drug companies, and so hopefully in the future we'll have more effective HIV treatments because of this. Okay. Uh, all right, so another popular distributing project is Foldate Home. Uh, this is one of the oldest projects that's around. It was started in 1999 at Stanford University uh, to simulate protein folding. Uh, protein folding, basically the uh, every living thing uh, makes chains of proteins out of, that are copied off of DNA, and then the proteins are folded to make little, like, biological nanomachines that, that run around in your body and do various things. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a number of different ways that these proteins can misfold, uh, fold incorrectly. And that can lead to a number of dis different diseases, such as Alzheimer's, mad cow, Crutchfield, Jacob, ALS, Parkinson's, Huntington's, uh, cancer, and a number of others. So Folding at Home's primary research is looking at this protein folding process in, it, in an attempt to develop various drugs and other cures for these various diseases that are out there. Uh, Folding at Home in total, not just the Brony at Home team, but Folding at Home in general, runs at, at uh, 40 petaflops of computing power making it the most powerful supercomputer in the world. Um, over their fairly long history, they've published 114 scientific papers out of uh, Stanford University with their various results and uh, all, their, all their data is publicly available. Um, unfortunately, developing these new drugs and cures and whatnot is a fairly slow process, but they have had some successes in that area. Uh, in 2010, they made an Alzheimer's inhibiting drug, which is still in testing. And then also in 2012, they designed an immune system drug that attacks cancer. And this was 300 times more effective than the current uh, most effective drug that was out there. And that's still in development. All right, another program uh, along the similar lines at Folding at Home is Rosetta at Home. Um, one of its main projects is along the same thing. It's, it's protein folding, but it uses an entirely different method. Folding at home uh, focuses on the process of going from one stage to an, an, uh, a 
an end. Uh, Rosetta at home is basically predicting what the most likely outcome of the fold is. Um, so the two projects actually kind of work in hand in hand. Rosetta can predict with alarming accuracy uh, what a protein could end up like, and then some of the Ros Rosetta results are actually sent into folding at home projects to verify whether this is, uh, whether it is correct or not. And sometimes it can even shed even more light on the uh, resulting protein fold. Um, Rosetta at home is, is kind of a, a, a bigger project on the Boink platform. Uh, and it's, it's kind of, it's, it's important to have sort of these because of how um, I expensive in terms of uh, resources it is to um, figure out these, the 3D structure of these proteins. Uh, usually the method, methods it's used is uh, X-ray crystallography, which can take months and months and hundreds of thousands of dollars just to look at one protein. So by virtualizing the, these processes, we can look at hundreds of thousands of proteins in a much shorter time span with surprising accuracy. Uh, one of the big things that happened with Rosette at Home is uh, a little while ago, it managed to get a $20 million grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for uh, HIV vaccine design. And apparently, um, there is a currently unpublished paper uh, that says that Rosetta, has, Rosetta at Home has possibly found um, some really strong uh, Alzheimer's inhibitors. Uh, even more so than uh, basically almost like a, practically like a vaccine. Uh, it basically can, they theorize that it can stop Alzheimer's from forming. But of course the paper isn't out and so I haven't had a chance to look at it and verify the results so I could say definitively. But for those that are linking, oh this is a little bunch of hooey, these projects actually work and they contribute a lot to the scientific community. Uh, and th this is the kind of stuff that Scientists really like to be able to do this stuff quickly because um, a lot of the times it's money and it, money and time is kind of your enemy when you're finding a cure for some of these drugs or, or for some of these uh, diseases. Okay. All right, so there's uh, moving on from the the uh, biological related projects. There's a number of different astronomy projects. Uh, Einstein at home. The, the name Einstein comes from Einstein's theory of relativity, which predicts uh, gravity waves that we would expect to see uh, in our universe based on his theory of relativity. Uh, this project was started in 2004 by the American Physical Society, and they are using distributed computing to search the collected data from large gravitational sensors that they have for evidence of stars and black holes. They have, uh, they've published a few papers and discovered a number of uh, new pulsars through this research that they've done. Uh, SETI at Home, another project on the list there. They, they were formed in 1999 to search radio signals from space for uh, various patterns and uh, I think they're mostly looking for extraterrestrial life. Uh, this is operated out of Berkeley, the public research university in California. And let's see, over, through this project, over six million people have analyzed 160 terabytes of data. Uh, and so far, they've only identified a number of new pulsars, uh, but they're continuing their search in that area. Uh, Milky Way at Home is working to generate a accurate 3D model of the universe. Uh, they get their data from a two and a half meter telescope in New Mexico, and then they send that data out to uh, home computers to crunch on it. Uh, they've, uh, they've taken many measurements on stars and galaxies. They have identified a number of asteroids and, uh, and they also simulate gravitational interactions between uh, celestial bodies such as galaxies. And on some of the, uh, the physics project, uh, these are largely related to things like the Large Hadron Collider. Um, and that's what LHC at home is. It's, it's largely um, particle collision simulation, and it's primarily so they can optimize the design and increase the efficiency of uh, these extremely very, very, very expensive scientific machines. Uh, they they want to make sure that because of their huge cost that it takes just to run them, that they can get the most bang for their buck, so to speak. Um, it was a little bit of a pun. Um, 
So uh, at both LHC at home and uh, Muon One are, uh, well, Muon One is more working on what's the design of these. Uh, that's more on the optimization. LHC at home is more on uh, let's simulate the collisions um, so they can uh, help to process all of this data. Uh, okay, and then there's also a number of mathematical projects that run, uh, and of course these are uh, fairly obvious distributed computing projects just because of how easy it is for mathematics-based uh, software programs to run on computers. Uh, the main one, Prime Grid, uh, it has a number of sub-projects, mostly focusing on looking for prime numbers uh, in, that meet various criteria. Uh, for example, um, in 1962, John Selfridge found a uh, Sierpinski number, uh, and I'm not going to explain that, but a, it's a Sierpinski number is a number that meets various criteria. Uh, and he believed that 78,557 was the smallest Sierpinski number. Uh, but, but he had no way of verifying that. So it's only now through distributed computing and the the infrastructure and computing power that is made available through this, that we are now able to go and test his theory on, the, on this and actually verify if that number is actually the smallest Sierpinski number. Uh, and there, there's a large number of other, yeah, I'm not gonna go through all these. Uh, I'm just gonna mention one other. They, have, they do have a project going on to continue to search for the largest prime number. Uh, it seems like every few years some project discovers the, the next largest prime number, and currently, uh, if they did find the largest prime number, it would be 18 million digits long. Uh, and then this other project on here, the Great Internet Mercy and Prime Search, is, uh, this project is, is mainly searching for the largest prime number, and since they were founded in 1996, they have continuously held the record for the largest prime number. So clearly a lot of computing power going on there to search for those prime numbers. Uh, specialized projects. These ones uh, are kind of interesting. They don't, all the other projects we've talked about so far primarily use a computer CPU or GPU for computing power. Uh, but these uh, don't necessarily. Majestic 12 is a project, it's a distributed uh, crawling engine so they are, they send you, your computer gets a list of URLs and then your computer will crawl those websites and, and bundle up the data and then send it back. So it's, in this case, it's using your bandwidth. Uh, this is one exception to what I said before. This is a for-profit company actually and they recently went members only so you can't actually run this project at the moment. Uh, Wildlife at Home, um, this is uh, let's see. This doesn't run on computing power. This is this actually uses humans to do to do the work that they want. Uh, they have thousands of hours of footage from wildlife cameras that they have. Uh, right now, they're mostly focusing on grouse nesting habits. Uh, but it's very hard to develop a computer algorithm to watch these cameras and detect actions that happen. So they actually have people watch the cameras and you can sign up and go watch camera, cameras in high speed and like identify things, things that happen. Uh, so that uses, a, that's actually a, a man, kind of a manual project going on there. So basically it's about training uh, an algorithm or training a computer to identify this stuff, these actions by using humans to um, say, yeah, this is what happened here. And then the computer can say, okay, now I kind of know what I need to look for and then Hundreds and hundreds of those cues can develop into the computer saying, okay, this is what happened here. Yeah, so uh, Radioactive at Home uses uh, Geiger tubes to detect radioactivity around the world. So if, it would be very expensive to, for uh, uh, any business or university to set up sensors around the world, but by, by making them cheaply available and then selling them to people and then using that data, you can, in a more distributed fashion, get sensors all around the world. So this, they have a live map on their website of radioactivity around the world, which is kind of cool. Uh, and uh, I think they're watching, they're mostly watching for leaks of uh, like radioactive uh, power plants that 
you know, if they leak, they want to know about that and how and where the radio radioactivity spreads around the world. Uh, Quake Catcher Network is similar, except they are using accelerometers in everyday devices such as laptops and cell phones to detect earthquakes around the world. So, uh, so this actually doesn't require any specialized hardware. You can run it on your laptop, and if it detects a shake, it'll send a signal to a server, and then if there's a large number of shakes in an area at the same time, they can detect an earthquake that way. So they also have a live map on their website detecting earthquakes. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what you kind of need to get started with some of these projects. Uh, any computer can technically help, uh, though uh, you're going to be basically the newer it is, kind of the more effective it's going to be at um, working on some of these problems. Uh, basically anything in the last 10 years will run, will run something. Uh, it doesn't matter basically what operating system it's running, Windows, Linux, Mac, there are so or client versions for all of these. Uh, servers, gaming PCs, decade old laptops, there are even some that even work on Android phones. And um, I, I can't say for sure if there's an iPhone client yet, um, but most of these projects will utilize the CPU or the graphics card that you have if you have a dedicated graphics card, like if you, if you have a gaming PC and, and you're not act actively gaming, you can just uh, go fetch a project, uh, go fetch a work unit and, and just work on it. Um, um, so to get started, uh, you can download and install the Boink software, which is uh, freely available from the internet. Uh, if you want to get onto the Boink project, which is where 99% of these projects um, fall under the Boink software. Uh, the only exceptions are uh, Majestic 12, Full Link Home, uh, those have their own separate clients. Um, so basically, you, you install the Boink software, uh, you create an account on the project, uh, you can use the same username, credentials, and whatever, it's just, they want to be able to attribute the results to a person. So, and then you, you join it to your client, and then you can start working on these units. And then you can uh, join our team, the, the Brony at Home team, to uh, see how you stack up against the other members of our team. And this is just a sort of a screenshot of the Boink client in progress running a couple prime grid units. Um, I think it's running, looks like eight. Yeah, yeah. it's um, usually the, the CPU clients will use one thread per, per process. So if you've got a, a, like a big multi-core CPU on a big gaming computer, you can run one, one workload per core. And you can, you can, you can limit it. So, for example, on, on my desktop, I, I run a four-core CPU, but I only use three threads for uh, the point. So I have one thread open for if I'm on a web browser or I'm just moving around the desktop and I don't have, you know, any sort of uh, frame rate issues or responsiveness issues. And it also, uh, Boink has built in, if you want to do it on a laptop, you can tell it to only do it when you're plugged into an outlet. So it's not going to sit there and drain your battery. Because it, it will try to utilize every bit of, of processing power you have available. Um, if, if you tell it to, it will. And your, your computer can get quite hot doing that. And it, it will drain the battery very fast. Uh, yeah, I'm going to mention one other thing about this. The very bottom task is actually a GPU task. This computer has a, well, not this laptop, but the screenshot this, com this is from is, it has a GTX 780. And uh, GPUs are very good at, at lots of parallel math equations, and thus is a fairly good candidate for. Um, running these distributed computing problems. So uh, GPUs are very good at, at, uh, at running these tasks as well. Um, some usage concerns, though. Um, depending on how you have your computer set up, working one of these projects won't have a noticeable impact on your computer. Um, but like, uh, for instance, if, if you're running a bunch of blank projects, you can just tell it to use one less um, thread than you have cores, and you'll be fine to like browse the internet and watch YouTube videos and whatnot there. Um, some things that can do though is, yeah, it can decrease the responsiveness of your computer sometimes, it, especially if, especially in graphics, if you also are running something on your graphics card at the time. Uh, I do use my graphics card quite a bit and I can still browse the internet and sometimes I, I will see the performance hits. Uh, increased power usage. Uh, yeah, you will probably run up a decent power bill. Um, during one of our uh, contests last year, 
I run a reasonably high-end gaming PC on this, and it was drawing probably about 500 watts from the wall for a month straight, and I ended up having to pay about 70 bucks more in power that month. Uh, increased temperatures. Yeah, make sure you have a reasonable cooling when trying to work on these for long periods of time, or you may find you've just bricked your laptop. Um, laptops are probably not the best to have running 24-7 unless you've got it in a nice air-conditioned room or have got a fan pointed at it because laptop cooling is kind of notoriously bad. Um, I've bricked one myself because of that problem. Uh, so, um, and light, so these, these uh, clients do have to use some of your, um, your internet because they got to send the work units to and forth, but it, it won't be more than a gigabyte per month unless you're doing a huge number of projects and turning them over. Um, uh, so these are just some screenshots of some of the stats pages because every, these, apparently everybody here likes stats. You know, like saying, woo, I'm the best at this. Uh, so basically there are a whole bunch of websites that are basically are there to conglomerate all of these um, stats from these projects. Because each one of these projects is, okay, you fetch a working, and then once you complete and send the results back, you're given points. The points technically have no value. It's basically saying, yay, I did this project. And for a lot of the Boink projects, it, as long as you complete it by the time they want it back, and for pretty much every one of these projects, you're given a time frame by the time they want the results back. Usually it's, I've, I've never seen one longer than 14 days. Uh, and depending on certain projects, um, may have like four or five days at, at most. Um, particularly some of the really, really big ones for folding at home sometimes will have two days. Um, but you, you need very specialized hardware to work on that, so we're not gonna go into that. But um, they, they do want, because this is real science and they do need the results, they do want these, these, um, these units quickly. And if, if your unit, that one of the ones you fetches doesn't complete in time, they will send multiple out to make sure it gets done in, in a timely fashion, so. Um, but most of our, uh, well, actually, let's go to the next slide. Okay, well, before we go on, I just want to mention that stats are completely optional. You can run the software in your computer, forget about it, and it'll just keep going and going and uh, keep returning results. Uh, but stats are just like a fun little extra uh, if you if you like looking at rankings and numbers and badges and achievements and and whatnot, all that is is available. Uh, so we usually have competitions twice a year. Um, right, we're kind of in a we kind of spent a little bit of our donation budget for a project at the beginning of the year, so we actually don't have, didn't do one in the middle of this uh, year. Um, Previously, back in the year, uh, we did the Combined Community Charity Challenge, which started in November, which was a, a joint effort between the Brony Home team and the moderators of uh, some of the, uh, uh, like the My Little Pony subreddit, uh, where we basically brought a whole bunch of people in to, uh, it, it was, uh, there was like a, an art contest, uh, um, there was a, a regular, like a, a charity give money drive, to uh, as, as long as with the uh, distributed computing aspect of it that went on for 60 days. And uh, I think we raised $24,000 in addition to all of the computing time we pushed forth the project. And uh, quite a few of the, some of the, um, <clears throat> some of the artists in the fandom actually produced uh, works of like plushies and whatnot that were given out as prizes to some of the higher competitors or some of the, uh, the, the, uh, the Excuse me. Some of the people that uh, contributed quite a bit to the project and uh, won in certain aspects. So usually, when we hold a competition, we will give away things like uh, some plushies, you know, sign, uh, free commission slots for art for some people. Uh, sometimes we'll even give away computer hardware like graphics cards for desktops. Uh, apparently, there is a competition planned in October. Uh, this is yeah. news to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we don't have a whole lot of details on that yet. It's still uh, being planned. But yeah, there are prizes. Uh, and, and there's also prizes just for participation. So even if you're running it on a single computer and it's not doing very much, you can still, of course, every result helps. And you can still win prizes in our competitions. Yeah, there is a random drawing. that doesn't matter how many points you've, you've given to the project, you're still eligible to win something. So. Um, OK. 
And so uh, that's the URL to our website, uh, bronyathome.org, and we've got details on the projects. Uh, we've got some setup guides to help you out. Uh, and there's also forums where you can ask questions and sort of just chat with everybody on there. And uh, yeah, here's this uh, picture of the, our I have page. our website. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it has information about, uh, you know, it has fairly long explanations about a bunch of projects we run and uh, how to get set up, frequently asked questions, uh, information on competitions will be up here. Uh, and then, of course, we have forums where you can come and chat with us, and then the IRC as well, if you know what that is. Uh, I, do, I do have these little cards. If you want to remember a URL, you can grab one of these. Um, I think, is that basically it? Yeah, that's basically okay, it. Okay, so we'll uh, open it up to questions. If, any, if you have any questions about uh, the Brony at Home team or the projects that we run, uh, feel free to ask us. Yes. Rigs. Um, let's see, I have, okay, I actually bought a server for folding. I have, <laughs> it has, it's a, it's, a, it's a blade server, but combined total, it has like 32 cores, 64 threads, and 96 gigabytes of RAM. So it does a fair bit of. You got uh, it off of eBay for like 700 bucks, right? Yeah, it was used really cheap. Um, and then I do also run stuff on my desktop computer, like my gaming computer has the GTX 780 GPU that's, that runs the specialized projects. Uh, so, but you can run it on anything, any desktop computer. Um, um, do you have anything? I run a, a, an i5-760 uh, quad core, and I run a GTX 680 and a GTX 460 in, on there too. So, I'm not as fancy as him, though. Apparently, <laughs> somebody recently joined our team that is putting eight graphics cards and trying to push. Basically, he's trying to say, I'm better than all of you and trying to outdo everybody else on the team. And if he ever gets his rig up and running, he's going to be, he's basically going to be put more points on folding at home than like the top five people combined. Yeah, it's, it's all for the greater good. So, uh, yeah. Nick. yeah. Uh, no, well, the software, I don't remember who publishes the software, but it's all from a nonprofit organization, so they don't bundle any, uh, like, adware or any viruses or anything with their software. You can just uh, get, go to the Boink software and, um, and download it from there, and it's, it's perfectly fine. I've never heard of any issues of people getting viruses or malware. Um, folding at home comes directly from Stanford University. So it's, it's yeah. vetted and there are thousands and thousands of people that contributed to the project. So if, if something came up, um, they, would, they would jump on that real quick because this is a lot of very important research that's going on. The same thing is uh, the Boink client comes from University of California, Berkeley, and that's the, sort of the same way. So Is it open source as yes. well? Um, Folding at Home is not open source. I believe Boink. Okay. But Boink probably is. And Boink is cross-platform, Windows, Mac, Linux. Yeah. So. Hmm? Ah, okay. Yes, okay, thank you, yeah. You again? Um. The AMD cards. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, if, if you've been following um, uh, alt co or crypto coin mining, then you may know that the the, NB, the AMD cards are better for that type of mining, and then of course, and that also makes them better at folding as well. Well, I believe. part of it the depends thing, on the project, actually. Well, for for folding at home example, yeah, AMD all the way because apparently AMD cares more about open computing language than Nvidia does. So, um, but most of the virtually every Boink project out there supports your CPU. Some of them do GPU, some of them do not. So if you've got a regular laptop, you're probably going to want to jump on Boink. If you've got higher end desktop, you can add Foley at home because I, I, I do both projects on mine. My CPU runs Boink and my GPU runs Foley at home because a regular GPU is not going to do very well in Foley at home compared to a, to a, a regular CPU isn't going to do very well in Foley at home compared to a GPU. GPU yeah. will, will run circles around the CPU yeah. like dozens of times over. 
Yeah, and I got my, I picked up my NVIDIA card like six months ago when the AMD cards were way overpriced from the, yeah, they were way up there. So, yeah, that's why I have the NVIDIA card at the moment. 25 minutes. We have a lot of seriously have more, 25 minutes? Yeah, we have a lot of time. Wow, we didn't talk very yes. long, did we? Mm -hmm. Uh how do we get a couple thousand more people to, to realize, hey, this is an effort to play the helpful role? And especially I read that you said that the Brony team is in the top fifty already. Mm -hmm. Do you have yeah. any guess um how what percentage of people are are participating? Like how many how many members do you have? Uh we have over a thousand that have contributed in the past. Some of them have have stopped for various regions, some of them have you're not, once you start the project, you, you can basically run a working unit whenever you want and you can tell it to stop whenever you want. You aren't going to lose points. Um, you, you might, you're, you're, you're gonna probably get passed by other people in the rankings if you actually care about that, but. Um. Yeah, and that, that's why we do the contest that we do just to uh, encourage people to join and uh, we can publicize that quite a bit. Uh, like we talked about the, we joined up with the My Little Pony mods on Reddit to do the combined community charity challenge, and uh, and quite a few people signed up because of that. So, yeah, uh, it the was contest. yeah the this combined community charity challenge uh, kind of went out to the Harry Potter subreddit and the Adventure Time and the uh, uh, Last Airbender subreddits too. Yes. And uh, let's say we we kick their butt about <laughs> ten times over. Yes. In probably every competition. Yeah, the Brony community is very, uh, very supportive and and uh, and likes to get in on these projects. So, yeah. Yeah. the The default Boink options are pretty good, but they have a there's a ton of options to configure them. You can set them to, you can limit them to a certain number of cores. You can limit it to a certain percentage of your computing power. Um, Can't you, you also, I think you can also limit it based on uh, heat too. Oh, okay. I, I, I've, I think I distinctly remember them saying uh, that like if you can, it will throttle its process back. There's like a setting in the Boink client that you can throttle it back if you're, it, basically if your computer detects it's getting too hot, so. And, and CPUs in general don't break when you overheat them. Yeah. They, they will shut off. It's not, you can't, yeah. you can't break your hardware really. There are a huge numbers of safeguards built into your computer to make sure that you don't brick the CPU. I mean, uh, I'm an IT specialist by trade, and w one of my mantras is 99.999% of the time, it is not the CPU that is the problem. Because they are, your CPU will probably last longer than every other component in the computer by many, many years. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, I can't, I'm an NVIDIA user at the moment, so I can't really say to that. Um, yeah, I don't follow that. Like. Yeah, if you poke around on forums, you may be able to find certain versions that work better than others. Uh, for GPU folding, like you don't need Crossfire, you don't need, you don't even need a high speed connection, just like 1X is, is fine, which is why a lot of people, when they're building folding rigs or mining rigs or whatever, will just have extender cables. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they only get 1X connection instead of 8X or 16X or whatever but that works fine for folding. But we do have quite a few people on AMD and uh, I know in the past, I, I've, I do beta test some of the drivers and I had to put warnings on the website because the drivers were, had poor performance, particularly on folding at home. So I kind of, I, I haven't done it recently though. But yeah, in general, the newest drivers will work fine and. But of course, if you, if you test the newest drivers, you say, eh, this isn't quite what I think it should be. You can just post a notice to the forum and say, yeah, don't use these drivers. And, Fortunately, they make it relatively easy to just roll back to older drivers with all this stuff. So you can get the, get the performance you want because this is all about 
well, at least for, for some of these projects, like folding at home on the GPU um, has a thing called quick return bonus. The faster you do it, the more points you are going to get. Um, that's, an, I, I don't know of any point projects that follow that paradigm, but in, so fo that's kind of why folding at home is, is really big in the competitive space, and that's why um, if you actually look at like uh, the overclock.net stats page, you will see people with millions and millions of points because they've actually spent like over $100,000 on folding rigs, where they, they literally like heat their entire house just by this hardware. And they've got like power bills in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars. That's why we like the winter. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, winter is runs better. Computers run better. Yes. Overclocking. Uh, yeah, I do. I do overclock my uh, my gaming rig, which I also run Boink on. Um, I don't. I don't think it's common. I don't know. Like you certainly don't have to overclock, but whatever. It's more of a. Um, it's more of a. I, I want the. I want the points. Give me. Give me. Give me. Give me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah you had a question? Um, overclocking graphics cards is kind of like a science in itself. Um, I kind of want to do this a warning as if you want to, if you really want to go into that, make sure your overclock is absolutely stable before you start working on some of these projects because um, I, I did play with overclocking on my 680 before um, and let's just say the, I thought it was stable and then the first few units I threw into it, it was like nope, it got 3% and was like yeah you just had an error and I'm going to dump this unit. And it kept doing it over and over again, so I was like, yeah, okay, I gotta stop this. And eventually I just took the overclock off because I couldn't get it stable. Yeah, on Prime Grid, they do have a warning on some of their long running projects that just say, you know, please don't overclock because if there's an error at any point in this three day task, you know, it's gonna throw it out the window. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they always send the work unit out to two people and then it verifies that they got the same result. Uh, yeah, they seem to do a little bit of error checking as they go. I know, I believe Folding at Home does on a lot of its stuff, and so it, it will know when it reaches an error and it will abort the unit and tell you in the console uh, that it has done so. And then it will either, it'll probably, it'll send it, usually send it back immediately and say, yeah, I got an error. Um, and um, then they'll, they'll try to fetch another one. Um, but sometimes if it's not overclocked and you let it go too long, you'll have sent back 20 or 30 units that were bad, and then they gotta send them out again. Any other questions? So, okay, I guess we'll uh, wrap it up. Thanks everyone for coming to our panel. Uh, feel free to grab a card if you want to check out our website. Uh, yeah, do you have a question? Uh, show of hands if you are in our project or on our team. One, two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so a few people. Well, that's cool. Kudos if you've worked on it in the past, and here's hoping that you will uh, keep contributing to the project in the future. So, okay, uh, yeah, thanks. And feel free to chat with us later after the panel if you would like to as well.